back in the base set days of Pokemon, I remember there was one deck that was like a troll deck or a joke deck. It was just something that wasn't supposed to work, but I remember people ran it. The deck was super simple, anyone can do it, and it only consisted of two cards. The first card in the deck was between two to four base set Mewtwo's. Typically it was two, but you could see four sometimes. The second card, which depends on how many Mewtwo's you have in the deck, is between 56 to 58 Psychic Energy cards. This was a deck, this was a literal deck people played during that time. Now there's a reason why this deck worked, and there's a reason why this deck did not work, and in the end, it ended up no longer being a thing because it just did not work. And not because of what the cards in the deck were, but because of how the rules were played. And if you already figured out why this doesn't work, just bear with me, I'm going to explain it from beginning to end. Of Mewtwo's two abilities, only one is what matters, which is the second one, Barrier. Two Psychic Energy cards, and it simply reads, This card, one Psychic Energy card attached to Mewtwo in order to use his attack. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all effects of attacks including damage done to Mewtwo. In any other situation, Barrier was just a stall or a way for Mewtwo to protect itself, not take any damage, not getting affected by anything like poison or asleep from any of your opponent's attacks during their turn. Now what you would do is you would obviously shuffle Mewtwo and your deck of 58 or 56 energy cards together. And when you draw your opening hand, if you have just energies, no basic Pokemon, your opponent draws two cards and you repeat the process again and again and again until you get a basic Pokemon such as Mewtwo in your hand. Which is why having two was more optional than having four. With Mewtwo down, you preferably want to go first. You would attach an energy card in your turn. Their turn goes, they might attack. Your following turn, attach another energy card, and then start doing barrier. That is, if they even got a turn. The idea of this deck is, at the start of a player's turn, if they cannot draw a card from their deck, they lose. That's why this deck was a troll deck, that's why it was a joke deck. The idea was just to not have any Pokemon in your hand, to the point where your opponent decks out or draws all their cards, and then play Mewtwo with barrier, so it can't take any damage during your opponent's turn. Now that is a huge gambit, and it on paper it, it sounds funny, it sounds like it could work, but in reality it really wouldn't really work that often, or at all really. Mostly because of a very simple reason, energy removal and super energy removal. I mentioned a dozen times, everyone runs these cards, or ran these cards in their deck. So even if your opponent drew half their deck, and you finally get a Mewtwo and you throw it down, they're just going to energy removal any energy cards you put on it, even if you go first. And every turn after that, you're just going to keep energy removing all your energy cards. So Mewtwo will never be able to pull off its barrier, and you are unlikely to make any kind of comeback. That's it. That, that's all this deck was. Don't get Mewtwo in your hand. Keep shuffling. Keep having your opponent draw two cards to start a turn because you don't have a base of Pokemon. And have them deck out before turn one, or hopefully deck out as soon as possible. Now aside from how risky that was, there is a fundamental reason why this deck did not work. And that simply comes down to how the rules in the game work. Now you have to understand, this was during a time card games were still somewhat new, especially something like Pokemon. In the first rulebook, on page 5, second bullet, it reads, If you don't have a basic Pokemon card in your hand, it is a basic Pokemon in the upper left corner, show your hand to your opponent, shuffle it back into your deck, and draw 7 new cards. Your opponent may then, may then, it's a big thing, may then draw up to two extra cards. If you still don't have any basic Pokemon in your new hand, you can repeat this process. But your opponent gets to draw two extra cards each turn. In the second version of rulebook, page 5, same exact thing. It says your opponent may then draw two extra cards, and you repeat the process. The version 3 rulebook that came to Fossil went an extra step here, had a separate section for it, a little mini section, and it does specifically say your opponent can choose to draw up to two extra cards. So at that point, Wizard of the Coast must have realized a lot of people were misreading the rules and did not understand that part correctly. Also worth mentioning, in all three rulebooks, from cover to cover, it does not talk about that subject again, only in the very back when it talks about what to do if both players do not have basic Pokemon in their hands. It does say neither player draws two extra cards, but you repeat the process. 
until you have the situation where both players replace the Pokemon or one does not and then the opposing player chooses to draw two extra cards. Now I know that sounds silly and you're probably thinking well who would fall for that or who would make that kind of mistake. This was during a time where card games were hitting a larger audience and careless mistakes like this happened and it continues to happen. A good example of this would be in Yu-Gi-Oh! where you had the card Solomon Judgment and Barrel Behind the Door. Forgive me for using Google Image to show you the cards. I don't have them with me. I'm pretty sure you have them, Steven. And if you don't, then I have no idea where they went. Speaking strictly Yu-Gi-Oh! Why, Solomon Judgment was a card that negated anything your opponent can do. It was extremely strong, but the cost was paying half your life points. In Yu-Gi-Oh! you start with 8,000 life points. If you go down to zero, you lose. It's a big risk card. Barrel Behind the Door was another card that came out in a later set. Whenever a card's effect inflicted damage to your life, you can activate that and your opponent takes that damage instead. So I remember back then when Yu-Gi-Oh was big and the people had those cards, they were throwing that combo left and right. Solomon Judgment, pay half your life points, that's 4,000. Barrel behind the door, you throw that 4,000 at your opponent instead. That was huge back then. But that went away as quick as it came. At that point, people understood the idea of paying life points versus taking damage. Solomon Judgment worked on paying to use the effect, which is not damage to your life points. Again, it may seem minor, but that was just a mistake people made. And with this Mewtwo deck, that whole entire your opponent draws two cards, that is a mistake people made for this deck, or that is a misunderstanding, I should say, of the rules. That's really all worth mentioning. This was a little fun, silly deck for the time but it wasn't really a legitimate deck because it functioned on both players not being very aware of the rules and how they work in the situation of not getting a basic Pokemon.